What's good, y'all? It's Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're going to check out Wrestlers WWE had completely failed. Now, we've seen it time and time again where a wrestler, you would think, have a lot of promise, a lot of potential, especially coming from NXT. How many times have we seen that? Only for Vince McMahon to not have an idea of what to do with this person or management not have a clear idea of what made them so special and, and popular in NXT or in other independent companies. And they kind of dropped the ball with them. To the point where they eventually end up becoming enhancement talent or just straight up jobbers or end up getting released so we're gonna check out some of them instances where wwe had something potential like potentially great but they didn't capitalize on it appreciate all the love and support y'all have shown on the channel let's get right into this one man wrestlers wwe has completely failed be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos Number 10, Andrade. When Andrade returned to WWE in early 2024 following a failure of a stint in AEW, there was a rampant excitement. Andrade was and still is insanely talented, and due to his strong and healthy relationship with Triple H, fans had hoped that Andrade would be pushed into the main event scene. Unfortunately, for the first half of 2024, Andrade has just lingered around other people's storylines with nothing substantial to do. Whenever he's been booked to wrestle, he's done a great job, yet these matches have been limited. Mm -hmm. Andrade has under 10 matches since returning, and one of these was on WWE Speed. WWE have brought Andrade back into the company without a clear plan for the former US champion. Fans are slowly becoming annoyed at this, and it's only a matter of time before Andrade takes his frustrations to social media and begins to question his disappointing booking. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if he filmed this before uh him becoming the new speed the wwe speed champion i believe he defeated ricochet which i want to know if ricochet is going to be on the list on this list because it looks like he's out the door too number nine finn balor the 2023 was a great year for finn balor under the leadership of triple h balor was pushed into the main event scene with a world title feud with seth rollins mm -hmm. and the matches were tremendous especially the SummerSlam match yeah but 2023 wasn't without hiccups for the inaugural Universal Champion, as Balor was bizarrely booked to lose as the Demon inside the Hell in a Cell against Edge at WrestleMania 39. With Edge now in AEW, this decision has become even more baffling. In 2024, Balor's only won one 1v1 matchup, and that took until early June to achieve. Balor still has so much to offer the company, and he still consistently performs at an elite level. It's just that WWE, no matter who is running the show, can never fully commit to presenting Balor as a main event level star in the long term. Number well, that may end up changing because I do feel like he's going to be feuding with Damian Priest relatively soon. And I think that's that's going to be something good. I cannot wait to see when that happens. I do think it's going to happen this year. Damian Priest, Finn Balor, that's going to be something good, y'all. Number 8, Omos. Whilst fans were initially against the Omos push of 2023, the Nigerian giant managed to win the fans over thanks to solid performances against the likes of Brock Lesnar and Seth Rollins. Furthermore, Omos has managed to build a solid connection with the fans thanks to his social media presence, in particular his TikTok page which is incredibly wholesome and Omos has allowed fans to see the man behind the character. Omos could easily be presented as a draw and he has the ability to deliver when booked on the show. Unfortunately, it looks like WWE and Triple yeah, H have no plans to feature him in a meaningful role. Almost has mainly wrestled on live events and in battle royals in 2024, which is frustrating, as almost succeeded with getting over with the fans, yet WWE just pulled the rug from under him with no logical explanation. The same can be said for MVP. MVP is one of the best talkers in the entire company, yet almost his established manager is never featured on TV, which yeah, seems like a sure massive waste with him. of talent. Number seven, Shayna Baszler. When Shayna oh, Baszler, she definitely deserves to be on this list. Damn near higher up, cause boy, they have dropped the ball with her. How many times? Even in the Triple H era, they dropped the ball. I thought they were gonna do something with her with Ronda Rousey. Ronda put her over, even though that match was no one gave a fuck. I think they should have built up to it, but Ronda won it out. So we had something. We they didn't do nothing. They didn't capitalize. I, I would have, me personally, I would have been okay if she won Queen of the Ring. Something. I don't know what they plan on doing with her. I, I don't. So. Baszler was first called up to the WWE main roster. Fans had high hopes. Baszler's NXT Ugh. run was polarizing, yet she managed to establish herself as a dominant wrestler, and her MMA style made her one of the more unique female talents in the company. 
After a strong presentation early on, Baszler fizzled out extremely quickly and she spent the past four years in random tag teams and putting people over. This looked to change in the summer of 2023 yes. when Baszler entered into a feud with Ronda Rousey. Unfortunately, this feud fell flat and their eventual PLE match at SummerSlam was arguably the worst PLE match of the Triple H era. Whilst the quality of the matchup was without a doubt a major issue, the booking of the feud in the match was also a key factor in why the entire program flopped. Baszler still has a ton of talent to bring to the table, but it seems unlikely that she's ever going to be given the chance to reach the upper echelon of WWE ever again. Number 6. Ricochet a ricochet has been a hot topic amongst wrestling fans in 2024, especially when top AEW star Will Ospreay spoke out regarding Ricochet's booking in WWE. In an interview with Comic Book, Ospreay shared an opinion of many WWE fans who believe that Ricochet's WWE booking has been appalling. The fact that they only value his time for under 5 minutes is appalling to me. I just want people to remember who he is. If you go look at 2012 and 2013 Dragon Gate Ricochet, he was untouchable at that time. When it came to this generation of high flyers, he was the greatest. Mm -hmm. He's the greatest high flyer ever. I know it sounds weird, but I do include him on the same level as Rey Mysterio. Of course, Osprey is referencing Ricochet being relegated to WWE Speed Show on X. Ricochet has been given pushes in the company, notably reigns as Intercontinental Champion and US Champion, but unfortunately, WWE have always seen Ricochet as a mid-carder and nothing more. Yeah. There's an argument that Ricochet doesn't have the mic skills to be pushed into main event picture, and whilst this is a somewhat valid argument, some of the top names in WWE history have relied solely on the in-ring talent to get them over, mm -hmm. and it'd be relatively easy to assign Ricochet as a mouthpiece. Number 5. Shane And, uh, you know, he's most likely leaving WWE. And I said in my video talking about it, if he does go to AEW, I would prefer he didn't only because of I'm, I'm just kind of worried how they're going to book him. But at the same time, if they're able to book him like, you know, the ricochet that people want to see and they put him in meaningful feuds and give him some meaningful wins. Who am I to complain? I just don't want him to get lost in the shuffle because they have a lot of decent high flyers in AEW and at least in WWE he is the the standout it's just they haven't really done too much with him booking wise Sheamus for most of his career Sheamus has been criticized for being pushed into the main event scene where there was a lack of demand to see him in the role in 2009 Sheamus won the WWE title despite only being on the main roster for a matter of months and in 2012 he dethroned Daniel Bryan at a time in which Bryan was slowly becoming one of the most popular acts in the company. Mm -hmm. These arguments have merit, yet there's no denying that Sheamus didn't have somewhat of a connection with the crowd and his in-ring work has always been excellent. In 2022, the fans fully connected with Sheamus as a pro wrestler. Sheamus was delivering unbelievable work inside the squared bangers circle and this bangers. culminated by Sheamus having the match of his career against Gunther at Clash at the Castle. Sheamus even received a standing ovation following the match and this insanely positive crowd response continued as the weeks and months went on as Sheamus became a fully realized babyface that fans wanted to see succeed. Mm -hmm. Due to this popularity, Sheamus could have been easily chosen to dethrone Gunther and this would have been a satisfactory end to Gunther's acclaimed run. There was even a bigger push to see Sheamus collide with Roman Reigns for the WWE title. WWE needed fresh babyfaces to face Reigns for the title in late 2022, and a babyface Sheamus vs. a heel Reigns was a unique matchup that would have had a fantastic and unique dynamic. Unfortunately, WWE never booked the match to take place. With Sheamus back on the active roster on Raw, there is hope that Sheamus gets one more big push up the card before he retires, as WWE have truly let him and the fans down with his booking and presentation over the last few years. Number 4 Yeah, I'm not sure what they're going to do with him. I know he's in a feud right now with Ludwig Kaiser, and I like what they're doing with that too. Uh, it seems like he may end up putting over Lud uh, Ludwig, Ludwig. So we'll see how that plays out. I don't know what they're going to do with him. But he he's he's a he's a talented individual that deserves to be in some type of title contention. The question is where? Or Montez Ford. Mm. Since Montez Ford arrived on the main roster with Angelo Dawkins, fans have been collectively demanding that Ford goes on a singles run. Yeah. Ford's in-ring output is tailor-made for a main event level star. Yeah. And as we've seen time and time again that when Ford is given the opportunity, he has every tool it takes to deliver. Yeah. Fast. As time has gone on, the chances of this happening seem to reduce. WWE seem to be adamant on keeping Ford as one half of the Street Profits, which while somewhat understandable, isn't fair on Ford who should be doing so much more. Ford is currently in a group known as The Pride along with Dawkins, Bobby Lashley and B-Fab. 
and the group is just going through the motions. It doesn't help that the group had a botched heel run and this was cancelled after the crowd outright refused to boot any members of the group, yeah. which WWE should have easily seen coming. There was still a glimmer of hope that WWE will commit to a Ford singles run, but if they don't, then it will easily be one of the biggest missed opportunities of the past decade. The guy can talk, the guy has the passion, the guy has the look, he's very athletic. I honestly want to see a heel run from him. I want to see a heel run from him. It, oh, I think that would be so good. That would be so good. Oh, man. A heel Montez Ford. Oh, a guy that's frustrated with creative, frustrated with booking, frustrated with only being seen as a tag teamer. Oh, my. They have something here. They do. All they have to do is just pull the trigger whenever they do. Number three, Kevin Owens. It's borderline criminal that Kevin Owens has only had one world title reign in WWE. Owens is That's without a, a doubt assessment. one of the most consistent and reliable talents in the entire company, and there's nothing Owens can't do as a talent. Owens has indeed been given prominent roles on the show, and he's even main evented WrestleMania twice. Yeah. Yet it's truly baffling that Owens has never been considered for another world title run. It's entirely possible that Owens is one of the names like Kane that gets given a world title run towards the end of his career. This would be great to see, but ultimately Owens is in the prime of his career right now, so there's no time like the present to give Owens another run as a top champion in the company. Number two, Kofi. I definitely would love it in the, for the simple fact that Kevin Owens is such, he's such a cool baby face, bro. He he gives me the baby face of the, the Attitude Era who they're not just going to like, they, they're on site. You do something to him, he's going to get his revenge, and I love it. Great on the pro great on the microphone, great promo, very passionate, very intense, pretty solid in the ring. He's gonna put you over, and he also knows how to kick ass. Hopefully, one day we can see him as a a, a top champion once again because he, I mean, he's killing it. Even with the bloodline stuff, he's killing it. He's fantastic, bro. Kingston. 2019 was the crowning year of Kofi Kingston's career. The unbelievably good Kofi Mania story culminated with Kingston winning the WWE title at WrestleMania 35. Whilst Kingston's 180 day reign was a mixed bag, the way it ended yeah. left a sour taste in everyone's mouth. Kingston was booked to lose the title in an outright squash to Brock Lesnar on SmackDown, and this was a spit in the face to Kingston as well as every fan who had invested in the Kofi Mania story arc. Almost five years on from the infamous loss, there's never been any follow up. Kingston nope. has never sought out a rematch and he's never shown an ounce of anger or resentment. WWE have done a horrible job with Kingston's character as they've just booked him to not give a damn about the most illustrious prize in the company. Kingston would comment on the dreaded 2019 loss to Lesnar in a 2022 interview with NBC Sports Boston and as always the WWE veteran was incredibly humble. I don't really dwell on the why. There are a lot of things in the industry that you look at sometimes and go, why did that happen? You just move on and the wheel keeps on turning. For me to dwell on what happened in that match with Brock Lesnar doesn't serve me any purpose. It's not going to make me better or change what happened or do anything besides make me feel bad. I'm not going to let it do that. I have a lot more career left to handle. And number one. Hey man, kudos to him to having that positive outlook. But I've already said he will probably never get another WWE Championship run ever again. Now, they are teasing some type of split with Kofi Kingston and Xavier Wood with the, I guess you could say, the assist from Karrion Cross kind of trying to, he's trying to feed some negativity into Xavier Wood's ear. So that could be on the way. But yeah, Kofi's done. He had that one run. We was able to see it. It was a special moment. We'll always cherish. But that's it. He will never get another WWE title run. Another main title run. It's over for him on that. So they've made that very clear. Shinsuke Nakamura. It's almost a certainty that Shinsuke Nakamura will never win a world title in WWE. Yep. If this sentence was uttered to a fan in 2017, they'd probably laugh. As when Shinsuke arrived on the roster in 2017, it was virtually a given that he would ascend to the top of WWE. Mm -hmm. Over the past seven years, Nakamura has had endless world title matches, yet every single time he has been unsuccessful. 
Nakamura has lost title matches against the likes of Jinder Mahal, AJ Styles, and even Seth Rollins. And the former NXT champion is now at the stage of his career where if he's been given a push up the card, not a single fan expects him to win the respective feud. Yeah. Nakamura is basically an established star that puts over other talent, and this isn't remotely changed under the Triple H era. As whilst Nakamura is consistently on the main roster product, he's rarely booked to win major matches. Very much. Nakamura was one of the most popular wrestlers in the world in 2017, but now it's rare that he receives a substantial reaction from the live audience. WWE have failed Nakamura, and it would be an impossible task to take Nakamura back to the height of his popularity. But there you have it, folks. Yeah, 10 nah, wrestlers. I, I love Nakamura, but it's over for him. It's over. Like, no one cares. He has taking the role of Dolph Ziggler fantastic in the ring you can buy into his his move set he can get over with the fans but he doesn't win so who cares that's literally what it is he doesn't win so who cares that y'all remember the Cody and Nakamura feud leading up to Wrestlemania that or before Wrestlemania this shit was just ended I wanted it to end on the first one. I just didn't care. I, I I did not care. And you gotta understand why. Because we knew Nakamura wasn't winning. Him and the Seth feud he had, you knew he wasn't winning. It wasn't even like you could buy into it, maybe. No, because guess what? Guess what? They haven't presented him as someone that can win since he's been on the main roster like that. So Comment down below. Let me know some other wrestlers y'all feel like WWE has definitely dropped the ball with if they weren't on this list already. But I appreciate all the love and support y'all have shown on the channel. Road to 150K. I'm still here in the speed of YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See you on the next one. Peace.